David Christiansen, uh, wonder, I, I look at your fonts, man, and I already instinctually like you. <laughs> Uh, but uh, David was telling me he's just been plucked off the mean streets of Copenhagen and set down to the more civilized ways of central Indiana where he works with Sam and the rest of the racket team there. So please take it away. A warm welcome for David Christiansen. Hi. So this is a type theory sandwich. So I, I hope you were paying attention last time. Um, and, and I know that you like this font, and I know that you like f colors shooting around, so I did some of that too. Ooh. <laughs> um, but we, we can't do everything in new fonts, because sometimes we need to appeal a little bit to tradition. Uh, Dan Friedman and I are working on a little book in the sort of tradition of the little schema and the reason schema and all of them uh, about dependent types. And we hope it'll be done and out soon, but it is not yet. But you can find us later. We have some drafts that you can peruse if you'd like. And for the purpose of this book, we've made a, a little language, which is a little bit larger than Proust, but not a lot larger, which we call Pi. But oh, um, actually, this is a little book, so we have to use computer modern for everything. Uh, <laughs> and I, I figure what I'm going to do is just give you a quick run through of some of the cool stuff you can do with dependent types using Pi. Um, and so the first thing that I'm going to show you how to do is to prove that 2 plus 2 equals 4. And by say, when I say prove, what I mean is actually like give evidence. So what, what is the evidence that 2 plus 2 and 4 are the same thing? What? 3 is the same. Yes, that's the same too. They're all the same. So the evidence is that they are the same. So I can say define 2 plus 2 is 4. I, I used a long name so that I wouldn't go too fast and leave anyone behind. Uh, <laughs> and that evidence is same 4 because they are the same thing and it's four, and we get a nice little green check mark sort of down here in the corner saying, yup, everything's A-OK. -okay. Um, and, and I had a quick question to the audience also. Could I have said that one plus three, and I can also say that plus one three is the same thing as well. They're all the same. Then it says the expressions four and three are not the same nat. And they're not. I mean, look at them. They're different. <laughs> um, and, and, and so the thing I'm about to show you is from chapters 12 and 13 of our current draft. So there will be things you don't understand completely, and that's just the way of things. If you want to get everything in debt, it takes in depth, it takes time and it takes effort. And I can't give you that time and effort in 15 to 17 minutes here. But I'll do my best. So when we're talking about dependent types as proofs, then we're really talking about like evidence, right? And one thing we might want to talk about is like the evidence that a thing exists, and we write that with a sigma. So what th one way you can read this statement is as there is some fruit which is an atom, and atom is what we call symbols here, and such that that fruit and orange are equal atoms. And what, what might a proof of this look like? Well, sigma is, is a fancy way of talking about pairs. So we can say, define orange exists, and we say cons, apple, same, apple. And, and we, we find out that oranges and apples are not the same. <laughs> but if I come back and then say orange here, it's going to work, right? Not even if I spell it right? Come on. OK, so the problem is that the type sigma talks about pairs, which is to say cons expressions, where the thing in the car is mentioned in the type of the thing in the cutter. So if I come back here and I change that to orange, then we see that it's happy because the fruit that we've given here and we substitute here, it all works out. And then we can talk about the evidence of the odd, the evidence that a natural number is odd then. Well, that's, that's going to depend on which number we talk about. Um, and so we're going to write that as a function which gives us back a type, which is perfectly reasonable. Programs that, programming languages that don't let you do this are restricting you. And so we have odd, which is we give it a nat, it gives it back a type. So we give it some nat n, and then it's going to return the type of pairs whose car is something that's almost half but not quite. So we call it half without the L. Uh, <laughs> And so, you know, 
And then we also have evidence that n, the number we care about being odd, is equal to one greater than half plus half. Do you all agree that this is a good definition of oddness? Yeah. Excellent. Then help me write a definition of evenness. The, the, these question marks are, are a part of the program that is not yet written. The same thing without the plus one? You mean the add one, right? Exactly. So we can say sigma half, because we actually get half. <laughs> and then we'll say equal nat n plus half half. And this is, seems like a reasonable definition of evenness to me. Is zero even? What is the evidence that zero is even? Yes, exactly. Con zero, same zero. I can't see my mouse pointer. There it is. So I can say cons zero, same zero. And it's happy. If I tried to say cons one here, same zero, then it would have been right out. Because two and zero are not the same. And that two is coming from the plus half half that we had before. So I'll make this happy again. And so we've, we've talked about how to like find evidence of something, but we can also talk about evidence for all the things. And we write that with a pi, which is this letter right here. So what this is saying is, is that no matter what natural number we throw in, then it's going to return some evidence that if that number is even, then, it will, then one greater than it will be odd. So both pi and arrow are inhabited by things that have lambda at the top of them. And in pi, we're allowed to squish two layers of lambda together and write a two-argument function right here. So we can say lambda n, lambda, and then n is even, right? Because as you saw in the last talk, a proof of an implication is a function that takes evidence of the if part and gives you back evidence of the then part. So we're taking in our n, we're taking in our evidence that n is even, and then we're needing to produce evidence that add one of n is odd. And so almost half of add one of n is the same as half of n. So we get to use the, the same car from our pair right here. And then in order to transform the evidence that the car plus the car is equal to n into evidence that add one of the car plus the car is, is equal to add one of n, we use this operator called Kong. So Kong takes a proof or evidence of an equality, which we have, right, we can see it is right down here. And then it modifies both sides of the equality by some function, in this case, the function that adds one. And you can do the same thing going the other way from the add one of odd is even. But we have limited time here, so let's forge on. One thing that I might want to do is, take a, is, is actually prove that every number is either even or odd. And so in order to do that, I need one more thing, which is called either, or either, depending on your dialect. And I can write, so for example, I could say something like, the either nat atom left 42, and it accepts it. But if I'd written left of, what's something delicious? Pi. Pi. <laughs> <laughs> then it said that I expected a nat, and I was given an atom. And that's because I should have said right here. You know, you can see atom is to the right of nat. So I want to come back and say right. And if I spell it correctly, then it's happy. So either, there's two ways of making it either, using left or using right. And this corresponds kind of like to saying or. Because evidence of one thing being the case or another thing being the case is you've got to give evidence for one of them. And then in order to make it all go through and work well as a program, you tell it which one you gave evidence for. So now, when I want to, sh when I want to construct evidence that every number is even or odd, I do that with an operator called indnat, which is short for induction on natural numbers. And that's kind of scary sounding, but it's really, we're writing a recursive function. So the first thing we need to do is say, what's the, what's the type going to be at each step? Because the type actually changes depending on which nat we've got. 
And we do that by providing what's called the motive, because it explains why are we doing this recursion. And our motive in this case is that given any old number k, we want to say either even k, odd k. And now this isn't blatantly wrong, it is merely incomplete. And we can say, well, in our base, what we need is we need to show, we need an either, and then we've, everything's all computed all the way and expanded out and you get to see the guts of plus. But what it's saying is that we need either to know that zero is even or that zero is odd. Because we apply our motive to zero to find out what type we need for our base case. Is zero even or odd? Even. It is even, that's right. So I can just say, zero is even, right? No, I can't. And that's because we need an either. So we gotta tell it which one it is. So in this case, even is left. I haven't got par edited in my slides yet, unfortunately. <laughs> um, and then, after having done this, we need to say, okay, we, we figured out what to do in the case of zero. Now we've gotta be able to go up sort of one layer at a time and build through our add ones until we get to the actual end that we care about, whether is even or odd. And so the way that we're gonna need to do that, I step ahead a little bit and typed in the type. Is, so so the, the thing that we need as the type of this thing that's doing the stepping is it's gonna be, it's gonna take some, one less than the number we care about. So we're calling that n minus one here. And n minus one is some nat. And then we're going to show that if our mo we've satisfied our motive for n minus one, then we've satisfied our motive for n, or add one of n minus one. So we go from either, from evidence that either n minus one is even or odd, to evidence that either add one of n minus one is even, or add one of n minus one is odd. This is the most fearsome slide in the whole talk. So I'm gonna walk you through how it works. So the way that we do this is we are taking in some number n minus one, and then we're taking in whether or not that number is even or odd, because that's what evidence for it being even or odd is, as our type explains up here. And then we're going to use the, this thing which is called int either. And int either is going to be a function that explains what the type we're building is. And in this case, note that we're ignoring whether or not n minus one is even or odd in order to go for this because it actually doesn't matter in this case. So if you, if you remember nothing else, one thing you could remember is that uh, recursion and case analysis are the simply typed versions of their corresponding induction or case analysis. And so we're going to return either even add one n minus one or odd add one of n minus one. I think this expression looks familiar. And then in order to do that, we need to explain what to do, both if we had the thing that would be inside of a left in, in the thing that we're getting rid of or checking, and what we would do if we had the thing inside of the right. So we use sort of lambda, the, the ultimate binding form, and take what we do if n minus one is even, well then we know that add one of n minus one is gonna be odd. So this has been unpacked from its outer left and we need to put a right around it because we're going to odd. And then we take this previous proof or this previous argument that add one of an even number is odd and just use it. In the other case, we could take the, the fact that n minus one is odd and pack left around it along with the corresponding evidence that adding one to it is even because we put left around even things and right around odd things here. And, and that's, the whole, that's the whole case for this spot. And if we then stick the, a reference to that back into our even or odd demonstration that we find out in fact it, it works. We have, our, we have our little green check mark. Every natural number is even or odd. So, so what, what have we done, really, though? Because this, I've been talking about this the whole way through as if we're proving some fact about numbers that most of us believed was true before. But we've, we've done more than just write some kind of a proof, right? We, we've written a program 
and that program is finding evidence. So one way to interpret what we've done is that I can say, you know, even or odd of zero, and it comes back with this left thing here that we already knew about, or I say even or odd of 13, and it comes back with this right thing where we see that 6 is almost half of 13. But wait, 6 is almost half of 13? What if I put in a big number? What if I say 135? Well, 67 is almost half. Wait, we're dividing by 2, aren't we? And, and not only that, if we weren't dividing by 2, this program would not have passed the type checker. So at the same time, we've written a proof about numbers and a program that does something useful and a proof that that program is right, all in like 15 minutes of me standing here talking to you. Type theory is beautiful and it is powerful and I hope that you will want to pursue it further someday. Um, thanks very much for listening. And while you're here, if you want, find Dan or I. We've got some copies of this that you can flip through and see if you think it's fun. Thank you, David. Thanks. Quickly, do we have a question for David? A good question, yes. No. So the question was, do we have proof tactics? And one of our goals here is to not, is not to make a practical, usable system that you could use to write the next CompCert, which is this formally proven correct C compiler. Instead, we want to peel back all the layers of automation that make it useful for large problems, but also that obscure the inner goings on, and provide a way for you to sort of look in and see what actually happens when the gears crunch together. And so you get to do by hand, and I say get to, not have to, what the tactics would do for you in a system like Cock. Wonderful. He's going to be here all weekend, folks, tonight, tomorrow. Another hand for David Christiansen. Thank you, David.